of the Lord. And I'm not ashamed. I love the Lord. It's great to have an old friend, Pastor Mike Wallace, with us today. Hey, Pastor, we love you, man. Good to see you. We share grandparent duties. And we're honored to do so. We were getting ready this morning, and Abby said, Can you believe that you have a son who preaches for you? And you're only 43. I said, I know, isn't that a phenomenon? But what a gift. What a treasure. So thankful. This morning, I'm taking a little bit of a sabbatical from preaching for a moment. And I've asked our son, who leads our worship so well and has a great, powerful word in him, Talon, to come minister the word. Come on, welcome up Talon this morning, would you? Love you, son. Now, he's getting no sleep, but he's strong in the Lord and the power of his might. <laughs> amen, amen. How are we feeling this morning? We doing okay? Come on, can we give it up for the worship team? Thank you, guys. So powerful. You guys ready for the word this morning? Amen, amen. Well, hey, my name is Talon. For those of you who are new here, um, like my dad just said, ever so often I come up here and I, I preach the word and um, I'm just happy that you're here. I don't know how you found your, your way here. Maybe somebody invited you. Maybe you stumbled upon a, a post online or Whatever it is, we, we believe that you're not here by accident. We believe that you're here for a specific reason and that maybe every decision in your life has led you to this moment. And everyone in this room, I just really want to encourage you that we'll get out of this what we put into it. And I prayed and as I studied and as I, as I dug for this word, I, my only prayer was that God, would you just reveal yourself so strong to one person? Would you just show your, your identity, your nature to one person who's maybe been doubting you or maybe had no idea who you even are, who, who you can be for them? So that's my prayer this morning is that you would be touched by God. To my friends who I see every week, to my family who I see every week, all the regulars in here, that goes for you as well. Let's not let this moment just become a repetitious thing. There's something that God's still wanting to speak to you. Maybe you've grown up in the church. You know, I've heard it all. I've, I've read the, the, the Bible every year for 40 years, and it's like, no, God's still speaking, and that this word is still applicable to you. So would you do me a favor? Would you just put your hand on your heart? And would you just say, heart, stay open for 45 minutes? Would you put your hand on your head? Sorry if I'm messing up your hair this morning. Would you say, mind? Don't be distracted by worthless and stupid things. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad I'm sitting next to you this morning. As my dad alluded to, uh, I feel like every time I come up here, I'm going to mention my, my daughter because what else do parents talk about, right? You, you look in my, my photo album and it's just like thousands of pictures of Judah and she's like barely f four months, you know? Um, but yeah, so Ari and I, my wife, we just expected our, our daughter and I love, I love being a dad. Any dads in the room? It's the best. Amen. I love, I love being a dad. I love being able to see myself and my daughter you know everyone says she looks exactly like me and they say how cute she is so I just can't help but you know okay like must mean a little bit of no just kidding um, but one of the one of the things that I love about what Ari and I do is I love giving nicknames to Judah you know when she was super young all the all the 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 mothers in, she's still super young, but when she was like super, super young, when she would feed and they, you know how they make that face to like, you know, all the mothers in the room. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. 
Well, anyways, Judah would just go crazy for food. And so we nickname her, she's a little shark. Like, oh, she's, she's a little shark right now. Hey, little shark, how you doing? Um, or when she like kicks her feet, you know, when we're trying to change her and she's just kicking and going and going like, oh, you're a little thumper, you're a little rabbit. You know, everything that she does, we, we can attach a nickname, nickname to and it's cute. And she doesn't understand it, but it, it's cute to us. And um, we love giving nicknames. Anybody have any interesting nicknames in the room? Jared. Ari goes by Nons. Her name is Ariana. That doesn't make any sense. I grew up, I was, I was T-Dog. This is a tough crowd this morning. Oh my gosh. Anyways, when we read scripture long enough, we notice that God can be referred to many things. God can be called something over and over. Can you think of what that is? Maybe some of us are thinking, oh, he's the, he's the lion. He's, you know, God is often referred to a lion or he, he, he's the light or and it goes on and on. But the one thing that I, I want to hone in on this morning is that there's this repetitive metaphor being spoken all throughout scripture and it's tying God to a rock. Psalms 18.2, it says this, the Lord, he is my rock and he is my fortress. He's my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In Psalms alone, we see that God is described as rock 20 times. I know what some of you are thinking, oh, like that's the best that they could come up with, a rock. Like we see rocks every day. There's, there's big rocks, like hopefully the referring to God as like at least a, a big rock, not a small rock, right? It's actually more of a genius metaphor than we, we give thought to. God is, he's a rock. He's our rock. What does that mean? See, this metaphor, it's pointing to God as a rock, meaning that he is, he's strong. It means that he's, he's steadfast. It means that he's consistent. He's not easily moved or shaken and a refuge for those in need. A rock can provide security. A rock is fortress. It's a place of protection. See, you can hide upon a rock when, it, when being pursued by enemies. Now think of this, this is, this is from people who lived 2,000 years ago. This is, this is their metaphor. I know now it's like, what are you talking about? We don't use rocks in that way. Think of the people 2,000 years ago. It says that when you're being pursued by enemies, you can hide upon the rock or you can duck underneath its cover to avoid the heat of the day or a soaking rainstorm, thus a rock back in biblical times can be seen as someone's salvation. The rock is, is, is showing us all these amazing, strong, immovable, steadfast attributes, but at the end of the day, it's our salvation. Can you say that with me this morning, church? The Lord is my rock, my salvation. Come on, can we say that? The Lord is my rock my my salvation I've always longed to be able to preach from crazy life moments anybody else in here feel like why does everybody else get the cool stories why do they get the cool moments why why is my life kind of just like beige right like why is it a little simple why is it why does nothing crazy happen to me God bring it on let me experience the moment so I could come up here and preach from experience that was me <laughs> Give me a scenario, God. Which can be hard when you live in Riverside County, right? Google, what's the safest place to live in America? Top 10, it's like, there it is, Temecula. Nothing crazy going on here. Except for it's so hot, like what's going on? Why is there, <laughs> Ari told me the other day, she said, maybe we should turn the sprinklers on so our, our yard doesn't catch on fire. Like, okay. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's how it works, but we can try. It's like, oh, I just, just 
God, place me, go put me on a missions trip where it's, life is really hard, right? Really tough. But, but recently I've experienced this metaphor of God being a rock in a very real scenario. You see, it opened up my eyes to this reality that I hadn't seen or really related to when I would read that God's a rock. And if any of you have ever come close to feeling like you may lose your life, that's a, that's a scary thing. And it wakes you up like, whoa, 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 this, this, I'm not just floating through life anymore. This thing is real. <laughs> so every year, 4th of July, a couple of my, my friends and I, we, uh, we made it a tradition many, 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 many years ago. We've almost done it every year. I think I've missed like one or two years. But we, uh, we, we go drive down to La Jolla Coves, La Jolla Beach, and we, we stay the night, July 3rd, so that July 4th we have a, an awesome spot at the beach. It's going to be crowded, but we've literally slept at the beach, so we got the prime spot. And so that's what we did. We did that. See, in the morning of the 4th of July, my brother Caleb, my best friend Alec, another couple more of us, we were, let's go hit the water. Let's go see what's going on. Let's go rinse off. We just slept outside. We should try to get a little clean before our families come. And so, so the three of us, we, we go in the water and it's, it's normal. It's, um, everything seems normal. We completely ignored the massive sign that said, warning, dangerous tides, no lifeguard on duty, whatever. <laughs> We've been swimming our whole life. This is chill. We're fine. Um, that, that sign's obviously not for us. The, uh, the alphas of the world, we, we can handle it, we got it, it's for, for everybody else, right? Um, so we blaze past the sign, and we hit the water, and oh, it's, you know, like, no matter how old you get, it's always just like, oh, it's so cold, and this friend's splashing you, and it's like, I'm 26, but it feels like we're 12 right now, and we do the whole thing, and the whole routine, and we find ourselves in, and it's, it's, it's comfortable now, we're, we're used to the water, having fun, making jokes. All oh, the seal's gonna get you, I see it. You know, whatever. And um, so we're, we're out there for a little bit, five minutes or so, and we start pondering the idea of swimming to this massive rock. Like, it's a big, massive rock, um, a, little, a little ways out. And we, we all agreed that maybe, maybe not this time, maybe it's time to get back since the water's getting a little unpredictable. And... As we started to try and swim back to shore, we, we realized, why, why aren't we going anywhere? Like, I'm, I'm actually swimming as hard as I can, and I'm not making any progress. Uh, the, the beach is looking farther and farther away. Um, this is a little weird, right? This is a little strange. Um, and I... Being in the moment, you don't really think much of it, and I'm not making the, this dramatic moment, but you don't really know, you don't really know how to feel in moments like that. You don't know if it's, it's, it's a situation yet. You don't know if it's, it's casual yet. Um, but one of us in the water, Alec, he was, he was super far away. Alec was, he got swept out there a little farther, and he, he began to call for help for Caleb and I. Now, if any of you, buddy of you have been in the water and somebody calls for help, that's like, okay, this is like suddenly serious. Um, in a couple of years prior, Alex Martin, he, he got caught in a swell as well. Same exact thing happened. We were able to, to get him out and he was safe. But this, the, almost like three years later, the same exact thing was happening. So Alec begins to say, hey guys, like, hey, can you come help me? I, I need a little help. And... Caleb and I go to help him, which set off the reality that this might not be a casual thing anymore. Um, as Caleb begins to swim close to Alec, I, I can't help but remember what I was taught as a young child, that unless you are a lifeguard, unless you are super, super experienced in the water and know how to do this, as sad as it is, you shouldn't attempt to save somebody because you'll end up with two drowned people instead of one. Isn't that like the most morbid thought that you could think? But this is running through my mind as we're swimming to go get Alec 
Do I tell my brother Caleb, hey, I don't know if we can do this right now. Do I try to call Caleb off? Or do we just try to ignore everything and help him? These, these thoughts are running through my mind. Oh, oh, oh it's jumping to the worst. Is, is, is Alec, is this his last day? How am I going to explain to his parents that he's no longer with us? And if my brother gets caught up in it, how am I going to explain to my parents that he's no longer with us? All these thoughts are racing in my mind. Is Caleb even a strong enough swimmer to stay afloat and save Alec? He probably is. I was just thinking the worst, but Caleb, he could have pulled us both back in. But these, these thoughts are happening as, I'm, as we're treading water. I, I call to our friends, some bystanders, bystanders on, on the shore who didn't go in the water. I, uh, Cooper, um, we, I don't know how he heard me, but I was just like, go, get a lifeguard, please, because there's no lifeguard. So what do we do? You got to send somebody to go find him. So, so Cooper sprints off and he just trusts that hopefully something will happen. Um, so we're waiting for that. There's, there's, there's a reef next to the rock that I was telling you about that I'm temporarily able to hold myself up until the waves, these waves were so powerful and they were so strong and, and they would just suck you off of the rock and it would, it would pull you under and it felt like an eternity of, oh my gosh, ah, this is scary. This is not what I'm used to. So the reef wasn't the solution. And then it started to settle in. I started to realize, man, I'm actually so exhausted right now. Has anybody ever felt that in the water? Like, I don't know if I can stay afloat. This is, this, is, this is so much. It's not like you can take a break. It's not like running, running on the sidewalk and like, I'm just going to slow down or stop. Like, you're in it. You're in it. And I realized, man, I'm so tired. I wonder how the boys are feeling. I'm, I'm thinking of them. I'm thinking of myself. We're, we're fighting this tide for as long as we did. And, and I start to think that if we don't figure something out fast, we may not make it. I remember the rock that we were attempting to, to swim to in the first place, and I realized, oh my gosh, if we can't make it to shore, let's go to the rock. Let's, let's get to the rock. And we, Caleb, he, he, like I said, Caleb, is, he's the true alpha in all of this, and he somehow slithered his way, and he's like, oh, Talon, I think I can make it. I'm just going to go back to shore. He made it. That's awesome. But there's Alec and I, and we're really tired. So it's like, Alec, get to the rock, bro. Like, whatever you do, just book it to the rock. We're, we're climbing on top of the reef, and we're, we're getting thrown off the reef, sucked under again. It's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that again. And we try again. Alec makes it. I get thrown off the rock again. We're trying to get back up. Cuts all over my body. My fingernails are, are breaking from holding on. And we're able to make it. Thank you, Jesus. We climb up on the rock, and I remember sitting there, and it's just like, oh. And you know how when you're, you're tumbling in the waves uh, at the beach, and you, you lay down at night, and you just feel like you're on a roller coaster? And I just remember laying on that rock like, oh, my gosh, this is, w what a sigh of relief. But, but we made it. You see, sitting on that rock, catching my breath, all, all I could think of was, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank God that this, this rock was here. I, I, I literally think that it saved my life. I literally think that I'm standing before you because we were able to just catch our breath on that rock before the lifeguard helped us swim back to shore. I don't know what we would have done. I don't, I'm hoping that maybe we could have made it, but I don't know. You see, the, the reality of this is, is that there's some people in this room who, who spiritually feel like they've been struggling to stay afloat. They, they spiritually feel like they're barely keeping their head above water and they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. If you have your notes this morning, title of my message, is, has it been up there? Yes, okay. The, the uh, anticipation is gone. It's probably been up there for a while. Get to the rock. Amen. Can you say that with me? Get to the rock. Please write that down. Get that tattooed. 
Also, uh, first point I want to lead us into, number one, treading is no way to live. Treading is no way to live. See, living on God's rock is living in God's peace. And apart from the rock, we're vulnerable to the waves of life. And let me uh, confirm for you, there's no good thoughts that come when when you're treading water. You're not thinking of, what am I going to eat later tonight? Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. I wonder if we're going to watch Netflix tonight. You're not thinking that when you're treading water. You're thinking, oh my gosh, what's the reaction going to be when Ari finds out that I'm, that I'm dead? How's Judah's life going to be without a father? Or maybe if I make it, how am I going to share the news that my best friend and my, my brother are both dead? These are the thoughts that happen when you're treading water. And also, no good decisions happen while you're treading water. Because panic can set in and you can start doing some stupid things. See, outside of the rock, you're, you're susceptible to the waves of life. Now, I don't know what your, what your situation is, but I know that we all face some waves in our life. I know that there are, there's some rocky storms that come our way. And it gets real. And you start to question and you start to think those thoughts and you start to, to make those decisions that aren't necessarily smart because the waves are real. See, what, what waves have you been treading lately, church? Maybe anxiety? Man, what a wave that is. Anxiety. Over 40 million adults 19% of the population have anxiety disorder in, in the U.S. Anxiety disorders are, most common, are the most common mental illness in the world. Wow, what a wave. Maybe depression. Major depression is one of the most common mental illnesses affecting more than 8%, 21 million of American adults each year. 15% of youth ages 12 to 17 are affected by major depression. Depression is 50% more common in women. What a wave. What about fear and worry? Approximately 60,000 thoughts you think per day. What's truly concerning is that about 75% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. And 90% of your thoughts are just repeated thoughts. What about stress? Oh my gosh, we live in California. The cost of living is crazy. What do you mean I go to the grocery store to pick up three things and it's $70? What do you mean in the summers of, of I, I live in Menifee, so it's a little even hotter there than it is for you, Temecula folks and Murrieta folks. What do you mean my bill is $400? Man, the stress of life. Any parents in here, the stress of keeping yourself alive, but also your children. Man, what a wave, what a wave stress can be. What about temptation? What about sin? 69% of American men and 40% of American women view pornography online each year. A specific porn website alone reported more than 2 billion visits in a single month in 2023. Oh, what a wave. What about substance abuse, alcohol abuse, drug abuse? Because we have the anxiety, we have the depression, we have the stress, we have the fear, so we just want to feel like it's not there anymore, even though we drink and and, and we drown ourselves in in numbing ourselves, but it's it's not like it's gone, it's just it's just hidden for a second. What a wave. What about feeling brokenhearted? There are 166,000 deaths per day globally. There's 166,000 people whose our families are affected by their loss. Man, heartbreak is real. Seeing some people even post recently, they lost their cousin. Heartbreak is, is real. On average, people experience heartbreak in relationships three times in their life. And according to the American Psychology Association, approximately 
40 to 50% of marriages, first time marriages, end in, in divorce. Man, what a wave of brokenhearted can be. What a wave. What are the waves of life that you are treading right now? There's so many more that I didn't even get to. These are the waves of life. And today I'm here to proclaim to you that treading water is no way to live. And that today you can feel the peace of God. You can feel the security of God. You can feel like what we're talking about, the metaphor of the rock. You can actually begin to see that in your own life that where you feel weary, he's strong. Where you can't hold yourself up any longer, he, he's actually there to hold you up. That when the world feels like it's so inconsistent and shaky and shady on you, he's actually immovable and consistent till the end of time. See, there's a God who's standing firm in the middle of those waves. Unmovable, unshakable, strong enough to hold you up. So church, get to, get to the rock. I feel like we, we overemphasize the idea of strengthening ourselves. Here's the solution, just get stronger. <laughs> no. Don't confuse your strength with your safety because your strength will only get you so far. We have to break the idea that it's our strength that will get us to the end, that it's our might, that it's our power, that it's our willpower that will get us through the storm. In Isaiah 12, 2, it says this, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. The Lord himself is your strength. We got some pretty strong people in here. I don't doubt that. But you see, some of us have lived solo so long. Living off our own might, living off our own strength, and sometimes after doing that for so long, it's so hard to submit to something else because of how you were raised, because of what you weren't raised with, who you weren't raised with, who you had to become to fill the gap. We can be so accustomed to being the almighty, all-powerful, strong thing in our life. And then when it comes to the concept of, oh no, you can actually surrender all that and become a child again in God, we get a little, oh, I, that's not for me. I don't know, uh, my dad left. I don't know if I can trust the father. Those people hurt me. I don't know if I could ever open up to the father. And we, we convince ourselves that us being strong is enough. Or if we're going through, through something and we don't know how to get out of it, I just need to get stronger. But it's not us who gets us through the storm. It's not you that's going to pull you out of that addiction. Like, stop, stop prohibiting God from being God in your story. That's not your role. There's no pressure to be God in your story. You're not noble because you can tread water longer than the rest. Because it doesn't matter how strong of a swimmer you are, if you continue to tread that water, it's only going to be a matter of time. So it's like, okay, I, I lasted longer, but you still ended up in the same place that everyone else ended up. And we as Christians, oh, I'm so mighty, I'm so strong. I'm so seasoned, I've been through so much and, and uh, this is what I offer to the table and maybe some of us, we realize, oh yeah, but I'm still so stressed out and life is still so hard and I, I haven't had peace and I can't sleep at night and I'm here to say that there, there is a rock and he is your salvation and if you would just get to the rock, you would begin to experience the peace of God and the rest of God. 
Because some of us in here, you're saying, Talon, you're so dramatic, like everything's okay. I'm, I'm not like in a life or death situation right now. But maybe it's that you haven't experienced the peace and the rest of God in a long time. And God wants you, mature Christians, to experience that again. Have you neglected the peace that is found upon the rock? Have you neglected the rest that comes when you're on the firm foundation? It's nothing that you can do, church. Ephesians 2, 8 says this, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not, it's not you. Can you say that? It's not me. It's not my own doing. It is the gift of God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, can we just thank him? Thank you, Jesus, for that gift. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. That you became he who knew no sin, wore our sin, became sin, so that one day we could surrender ourselves to him and be saved. What a gift. It's not a result of your works, so that no one may boast that it's me. Church, treading is, is, no, is no way to live, okay? Okay. Number two, I want you to write this down. Guide people to the rock. Guide people to the rock. Right down the street, there's the rock church. I'm not saying everyone leave. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> kind of wish that was our name right now. It'd go really good with the message. But, but no, what I'm saying is guide people to Jesus. Guide people to the only security, the true security in life. Because people need help. They need salvation. Point people in the direction of the rock. When we were struggling in the water, how this beach is, is there's the beach and then above it there's like cliffs and there's huge rail and people walk all along it. And I remember when we were finally got on the rock and we were situated, there was hundreds of people everywhere from locals to Japanese tourists filming us. Man, it was a spectacle. Oh my gosh, oh, he got sucked under again. They're, I hope he comes back up. <sighs> like, <laughs> I'm glad that we gave you the, the, the most entertaining 10 minutes of your life while we are fighting for ours, right? And the reality is it's, it's we, can, we can find ourselves thinking it's so easy to watch people drown. And the enemy convinces us that it's so much more convenient, just, just watch. Just, just take a video so you can watch it again later. Someone's struggling, just go tell your neighbors about it. They'll, they'll get a kick out of it too. Right, and this is what we do with people who don't know Jesus and who are struggling. And instead of helping them, not that you save them, but you can point them in the direction of their Savior. But we're just, oh, 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 I'm already on shore. Not my problem, right? Not my problem. I hope you, I hope you help him, God. <laughs> but I think that we would begin to see real change in our communities, in our families, where instead of, oh, I'm just praying that God will reveal himself one day, which is great, and he, we pray that he does, but why don't you grab them by the hand and point them to the rock? Yeah. Because all this other stuff, it doesn't last. And there are people who are treading water who aren't in this room and they don't know what to do. And they don't know that there's something that can help them. They don't know that, that there's a rock that can hold them up, but you do. Jesus tells Peter in Matthew 16, he says, I tell you, you are Peter. And then he talks about his brilliant church. He says, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail 
against it. Do you realize what this verse is saying? The church is the rock. All those attributes that we gave to Jesus, that's the church. And it says that the gates of hell shall not prevail. We always think that, oh, we need to get to the rock so we can be safe and nothing can come get us. No, it's saying that there's no gate that can withstand the church. There's no defense that can stop the offense of the church. And I think that so many of us, we've been playing defense the whole time. If you play football, you can't just run defense while you're on offense. It, it doesn't work. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get to the end zone. And there's this whole entire defensive line. There's this whole entire gates of hell that's in front of them. But what does it say? The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Meaning that if you would just advance, nothing could stop you. That if we as a ministry would go out and advance, there's no gate. There's no stronghold that can stop what God's doing in us and through us. There's places that the enemy thinks that he controls and he fences off. Today I'm just so, so praying, God, would you just give them the courage to storm those gates? Oh, I, I can't talk to those people. They've already turned down the gospel too many times. That's an off limit. No, 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 no. Don't let the enemy think that they, he's got that gate in place. You keep hammering. You keep going. Instead of waiting for our city to find the church, why don't we bring our church to them? The craziest thing is that when we were in the water, I didn't even think of myself first. All I could think about was Caleb and Alec. It wasn't until 20 minutes in, I'm like, wait, I'm in the water too. I'm probably gonna die. <laughs> when you're in a life and death situation, you can't help but think about the people you love. We need to start grabbing our neighbors, grabbing our children, grabbing our families, grabbing our friends, and pointing them to the rock. Their salvation, it's not just your salvation, it's the salvation of the world. Don't let the enemy convince you that it's convenient to watch someone struggle and do nothing about it. It's not a spectacle, it's eternity at stake. And you have the power to show them who and where their lifeline is. Anybody been thrown a lifeline in their life? Oh my gosh. Oh, when we, when we got out of the water, I hugged the lifeguard and I said, oh man, I, I, I love you, bro. Thank you so much. Like I married and he, all this stuff, but like, I love you right now. Man, think of who you could be in that person's story. Not that you saved them, but years down the line, somebody, oh, thank you so much for, for showing me Jesus. Thank you so much that even when I belittled you and made fun of you and, and rejected what you were saying, you kept saying it over the years, and now I realize the truth and I'm saved and I'm healed and I'm whole. Thank you. But we're just convinced that the church will do that and they'll magically come in. But that's the thing about lost people, they don't just stumble into the church, they have, they have to be let in. And it's not his job and it's not my job to do all the work. It's your job. So be encouraged today, church. Salvation is here. Some of you thought you were done for salvation is here. 
He's not a little pebble. He's, he's a massive rock that you can climb on and your buddy can climb on and you can invite anybody on there and it's not going to go anywhere. Because God, he, he, He's your rock. Let me reiterate this to you. He is strong. He's steadfast. He's consistent. He's not easily moved or shaken. He's your refuge when you're in need. He's your security. He's your fortress. He's your place of protection. He is your salvation. So church, when you have questions, what do you do? You get to the rock. When you feel fatigued, what do you do, church? You get to the rock. When you're filled with worry and stress and doubt, what do you do? You get to the rock. When you feel overwhelmed by the waves of life and the pressures of life, what do you do? You get to the rock. When the storms rage, what do you do? You get to the rock. When you just don't know what to do, suddenly it got more simple. Just get to the rock. We'll figure it out later, but just get out of the water. Don't delay. I'm so glad we didn't take another 20 minutes to figure out, oh, should we get to the rock or not? Don't delay. In Proverbs 18, it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous, they crawl to it. They take a couple steps and get distracted and camp on the floor for a little. No, it says, it says that the righteous, they run into it and they're safe. Put a little pep in your step when it comes to your salvation and your eternity. Stop walking around thinking, oh, I'll get to it eventually. No, now. Right now, run. Get to the rock, run to the rock, swim to the rock. I don't, wherever you find yourself needing the rock, just get to the rock. And so many people in here were saying words like salvation. There is an ultimate salvation. And as much as we would love to believe that you can live however you want, you could believe whatever you want, and everyone's gonna end up in heaven today, I would be lying to you if I said that that's true. It says that there's one way to the Father and that's through Jesus Christ. Nowhere else, no other religion, no other prophet, no other way. There's no other way. There's one way. It's through Jesus Christ. It said that God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever so believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus came down fully God, fully man, walked on the earth for 33 years. Perfect, never made a mistake, never sinned. It was his time to grace the cross. He didn't want to do it. He asked God if there's any other way let, let it be that. That's his humanity showing, but he still did it for you. He, he did it for you knowing that this moment was here. And if you would just surrender your life to him, you would be saved. And that doesn't mean that everything is just suddenly good. It just means you know that there's a rock and that you know you have salvation. And you know where to turn to when before you were stumbling in the dark. So the first thing I want to invite us is all the, Christ, all the non-Christians in the room. All the people who stumbled into this room. Somebody invited you. Somebody posted something. And you're here. And you say, hey, I relate to that. I feel like I've been treading water my whole life. I don't know how I'm still here, but I don't know if I can make it another day. And the reality is, is that you don't have to. Jesus is here and he's waiting for you. And I wanna lead you into a prayer. I wanna I want lead you into a moment where you can invite Jesus into your heart. 
and you're like, I don't even know if he's real and all this stuff, but I feel like the Holy Spirit's working in your life right now and he's whispering into your soul and he's saying, no, I'm here. I'm just not loud and I don't rage like the things of this world, but if you would just listen a little bit, you would see that I'm here and I'm real. So all across this room, if you could just close your eyes. This is salvation at stake. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We run into it. We, we don't get around to it. Don't delay. Don't delay. Today is the day. The day. Today is the moment. And if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, if you want to stop treading water, if you, want to, if you want to experience what it means to have true freedom and true peace, to be born again into who God's called you to be, I just want you to lift your hand so I know who I'm praying for all across this room. Would you just lift your hand and say, that's me, I need Jesus. One person lifted their hand, two people lifted their hand, three people lifted their hand. Is there anybody else in this room that has the courage, and everyone stay quiet, has the courage to say, I need Jesus. Come on, I'll wait for you. Is there one more person in this room? There it is, one more person. You can put your hands down. Church, could we just repeat after me? Say, Jesus. I need you, I can't live without you. Father, I believe in you, I wanna follow you for the rest of my days. Father, forgive me of my sins, wash me clean, make me more like you, in Jesus' name, amen. With our eyes still closed, there's people in this room who have given their life to Jesus and they've been treading in those waves that I was talking about, anxiety, depression, heartbreak, addiction, many other things as well. I don't know the waves that you're treading right now, but I want you to lift your hand if you've been struggling lately and you you need to catch a break. I wanna pray for you. All across this room, people are, are lifting their hands. All across this room, is that you? Amen. Holy Spirit, would you just begin to fill this room with your peace? Remind these people what your peace feels like. Remind them what it feels like to catch their breath. Father, I, I pray that the weight of the world that's been holding them down, that you would just supernaturally lift that off their shoulders. Father, for the people who have been struggling to sleep at night, that they would sleep the best they've ever had tonight because of the peace that you've given them. I pray for the people who have been struggling with anxiety, with depression, with fear, with worry. Father, that you would just eradicate that out of their life, that those areas in their life that are broken, those areas in in their life that that need healing, God, you would supernaturally heal them that you would reveal to them the joy of your salvation, that you would restore to them the joy of your salvation. Let them not live another day knowing anxiety. Let them not live another moment worrying about the world. Let them not live another day where they're sunk in depression, God. Would you lift that spirit off of them? Would you break that chain? Father, would you remind them that that they can abide in you and that they can find rest. Father, give them rest. Show them that you are their strength. You are their refuge. You are their safe place. Father, I pray for the people in this room who feel like they have to do it on their own, that they feel the pressure to be strong enough to survive. God, show them that they can lean on you Give them rest. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm gonna invite the prayer partners up here because I know that maybe I didn't touch everything. Church, if you're in this place and and you need prayer, we, we, we believe that when two or more agree, that it shall be done. So prayer partners, please come up right now. If you need prayer, we're gonna dismiss service. You could just come up here and they just wanna pray with you. If you gave your life to Jesus this morning, Um, In the back here, my friend is lifting his hand. We have resources for you. If you need a Bible, if you need any questions asked, we wanna make sure that you didn't just give your life to Jesus and not know what to do next. Um, But we love you, church. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I encourage you, get to the rock 
And church, get people to the rock. Amen. Love you so much.